This tutorial is all about the reactions that we get when sodium hydroxide is added to solutions of transition metal ions. We get precipitates which are solids made when two solutions are added together and these have characteristic colours. Here you can see precipitates of iron 3 hydroxide on the left which is a reddish brown precipitate and also that of copper hydroxide which is a blue precipitate. There's three of these transition metal ions you need to know about. Copper 2 will give you a blue solid with sodium hydroxide, iron 2 a grey green solid and iron 3 an orangey brown solid. Uh, all precipitates of the metal hydroxide. You do these reactions by starting off with a solution of, for example, iron 2 sulfate or iron 2 chloride, any iron 2 compound, for example, and then adding sodium hydroxide dropwise to the solution until you get a precipitate being made. In these reactions, the copper iron, for example, or the iron 2 or the iron 3, reacts with sodium hydroxide to make a precipitate of the hydroxide. So, for example, this would make copper 2 hydroxide plus sodium sulfate. Copper 2 sulfate would be Cu. SO4 and sodium hydroxide would be NaOH. Copper 2 hydroxide would be Cu brackets OH brackets twice and sodium sulfate would be Na2SO4. Now here let's see if we can balance this. What we've got then is two sodiums on the right hand side so we need two sodiums on the left and we've also got two hydroxides, OH is on the right hand side, so we need two on the left, so that now balances. If we think about this in terms of ions, then the copper 2 sulfate being aqueous will be made out of ions, it'll be made out of a copper 2 plus ion and a sulfate 2 minus ion. The sodium hydroxide will be made out of two sodium ions and two hydroxide ions. The copper hydroxide is a precipitate, so it's not made of free ions moving around. But the sodium sulfate is made out of ions. It'll be made out of two sodium ions and a sulfate ion. Now let's look and see which are the spectator ions. These are the ions which are not changed during the reaction. Now the sulfate ion starts and finishes in solution. And the sodium ion starts and finishes in solution. So if we then simplify that equation to exclude all of those, we're left with that the copper ion reacts with two hydroxide ions to make copper hydroxide. Now this is called a precipitation reaction because we start off with two aqueous ions and we end up with a solid that appears out of that solution. Let's say we used iron 3 chloride with sodium hydroxide. What would we make then? Well, we get a precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide. And the remaining solution would be sodium chloride. In terms of formulas, the iron 3 chloride would be FeCl3 because it would be Fe3 plus and 3 Cl minuses. So that would be made out of an Fe3 plus and 3 Cl minuses. The sodium hydroxide would be NaOH. The iron 3 hydroxide would be Fe brackets OH brackets 3 times because you've got an Fe3 plus and 3 OH minus ions joined together as a solid. And then we've got sodium chloride. Let's try and balance that before we look at the ions in more detail. Well, we've got three chlorides on the right-hand side, and we've only got one on the left. So I think what we're going to have to do is put three there, 
We've now got three sodiums on the right, so we're going to need three sodium hydroxides, and that provides the three hydroxides we need for the iron three hydroxide. Now, in terms of ions, we start off with solutions. So we've got aqueous iron chloride, but we've also got aqueous sodium hydroxide, which is made out of three sodium ions and three hydroxide ions, all aqueous. That makes iron hydroxide. Now, that's not aqueous, that's a solid. But also, three sodium ions and three chloride ions remain in solution as aqueous ions. Let's now look at which are the spectator ions. Well, the chloride ions start off in solution and end up in solution, as do the sodium ions. So when we exclude those from the equation, we can see that the actual reaction is between the Fe3 plus ion, which is an aqueous solution, and three of the hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide to make iron 3 hydroxide or FeOH3 solid. In a way that was similar to the previous one because the reaction is actually between the metal ions, the transition metal ions and the hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide to make a precipitate of the metal hydroxide. In terms of what are called these ionic equations then, the copper ion reacts with two hydroxide ions to make copper hydroxide, which is blue. The Fe2 plus iron reacts with two hydroxide ions to make iron hydroxide, which is grey-green. And the Fe3 plus iron needs to react with three hydroxide ions to form iron hydroxide FeOH3, which is orange-brown. These simplified equations are called ionic equations. Iron two ions, Fe2+, react with hydroxide ions, OH-, a precipitate of iron hydroxides made. Write down the formula of the iron two hydroxide. Well, it'll be Fe, and then brackets OH, brackets twice, because we need two hydroxide ions to provide the two minuses to balance up the two plus. Iron and copper are transition elements. Brahim adds a small volume of sodium hydroxide to five different solutions. An insoluble solid called a precipitate is made each time. Look at the results table. It's not finished. Finish the table. Well, if we're using copper nitrate uh, and adding sodium hydroxide, then we'd an, end up with copper hydroxide, and copper hydroxide would again be blue. If we're using iron 3 nitrate, that contains iron 3 ions, so we're going to make iron 3 hydroxide, which is a sort of orangey-brown colour. The second part of the question is uh, on a different subject. It says, look at the formulas in the table, which one contains six oxygen atoms. Not six atoms in total, but six oxygen atoms. Well, let's have a look at each of them until we get the right one. This one contains no oxygens. This one contains three in each nitrate, but that's doubled, so that makes six. Well, that's looking like our promising one. No oxygens. This one's only got four oxygens, and this one has got three. Three threes are nine, so our answer here is copper nitrate, uh, and the formula, therefore, is CuNO3 twice over. Solutions of copper chloride and sodium hydroxide react, and we get copper hydroxide. In this reaction, copper ions react with hydroxides. The balanced ionic equation contains only those ions. So that would be copper 2 plus plus 2 hydroxide ions to make copper hydroxide. And there's our answers for the correct formulae. Uh, we get uh, one mark for that question. And for balancing it to show that we need two OH minuses, we get the second mark. Becky tests another solution with sodium hydroxide. This time she gets a red-brown solid. Uh, she knows the solution must contain Fe3+, so the ionic equation for the reaction takes place. It's balanced. Copy out and balance the equation. Well, first of all, we'll copy it out. Fe3+, plus, plus OH- minus gives Fe brackets OH brackets 3. Well, that 3 outside the bracket means we've got 3 of these hydroxide ions, so we need to have a 3 there for our mark. And there's our answer. So, in summary, we need to know the colours 
and the formulas of these three metal hydroxides, uh, Fe2+, Fe3+, and copper hydroxide.